So happy that this is working at the moment. This is a brand new laptop, just acquired, installed a couple hours ago to uh, make up for one that took a hit from somewhere I don't know. <clears throat> but we're going to talk about whole life insurance banking. Uh, this is uh, the theme uh, we're trying to figure out uh, in this group, uh, which is the Opportunity Zones Meetups. We get together twice a month. We present case studies and different and different things that are going on and we discuss these so that we're sharing the knowledge and mostly from a practitioner level, meaning that you're either uh, an investor who gets hands-on into projects or you are a project leader on an Opportunity Zone business or um, property. Uh, how do you go about doing everything? Uh, what are the rules? What are the limitations? Where does it work best? Uh, what are some of the mechanics that go into it? What are best practices? Uh, since it's so new, there are no best practices, so everything we're doing today is perfectly correct. Hi, Ron, come in. This, yeah, you didn't have to duck. You're shorter, but you do have to duck. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, have a seat. And uh, we're just getting started. Uh, so we'll come back uh, and get some introductions on you guys when we get into part two. Uh, but uh, we're going to be talking about whole life insurance banking tonight uh, in combination with Opportunity Zone Investment. So um, I'm Carl Dakin. I am the uh, presenter of the Opportunity Zone Meetup. I created this in November of last year. Uh, right at uh, about the same time, I helped put on a state conference for communities on Opportunity Zones. Uh, I've been studying this as a new way to add a little more uh, bump to a deal to make it more attractive to a larger group of investors or to create a more compelling outcome uh, to attract investors to a particular project. And uh, my background is uh, over the last 40 years, I worked with hundreds of startups and high tech innovative companies and have worked with virtually every form of raising capital in every, any manner possible. Uh, so uh, whether you're talking about equity or debt or combinations or grants or gifts or other types of funding, uh, we try to find a solution that's appropriate that is quicker, easier, faster to, to get done uh, at a lower cost of money. Uh, so I provide services uh, through my firm, Dakin Capital. It's one of the hats I wear uh, is that I consult on putting together capital campaigns and we spend most of our time trying to identify who loves you more than you love yourself so that we don't go through a long chase uh, to find the money. We simply position ourselves in front of somebody who needs you badly enough that they're re ready to write a check as soon as they know you exist. And uh, in some cases, those people are easy to identify and the process goes quicker. And some, there's still some hunting and uh, market analysis required. Uh, but we, we focus on doing that. I wear a number of other hats uh, where I consult or teach. Uh, adjunct uh, professor currently at DU. I'll be gone the last week of the month doing an international uh, transactions course in the country of Belize. And um, I've already done all my work, so I'm basically sitting in the back of the room, uh, making sure that everybody's happy in front of me. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, so I'll be gone the 24th through the 31st in case anybody's looking for me. Um, beyond that, uh, Opportunity Zones, Project Funds and Investors. This is part one of four parts in tonight's program. Uh, most of you are familiar with Opportunity Zones, but we'll give you the, the quick 30-second elevator pitch. Uh, in 2017, uh, the federal government passed new tax legislation. It was intended to encourage people who were sitting on underutilized or stagnant assets, such as stocks sitting in an account for years, and say, let's cash out of those. It's going to create a capital gain, but we're going to give you an incentive to move that money into a distressed economic community. So across the United States and the territories, there's about 8,600 different opportunity zones, which are designated geographic areas that probably will not change for the foreseeable future. There's 126 of those in uh, Colorado and 63 in New Mexico. Uh, since I'm now working with uh, starting a, a multi-asset fund down there. And uh, what they want people to do is put money into these arees and let it set for 10 years. They want you to not just sit, but work 
and work hard to help these communities catch up, become more economically vital, uh, potentially to get ahead if they play their cards right. And uh, this is uh, good for these communities because otherwise they might fall off the map or disappear uh, into the past. So uh, if you put your money in uh, today before the end of this year and let it set for seven years, uh, then you will get a 15% reduction in your current capital gains taxes that will have to be paid in 2026. Uh, but if you leave it in for the full 10 years, any gain on that investment is tax free. So it's essentially, it's a zero tax game uh, by the time you get to the end of a 10 year cycle. Uh, and so there's obviously lots of other questions about how, where, and when you set these things up, whether it's a real estate project or not, whether you're doing a fund or you're deploying that into a business or um, a property. Uh, but we're not going to dwell too much on those tonight. But if it comes up in the context of your situation in tonight's program, we're happy to answer your question. Just a, a quick general yes. question, even though we're two yeah, yeah, no. years into the 10-year period, you can, you can still have a full 10 years. You can go. You can go till 2046. Okay. So in, in, uh, the clock starts as soon as the, the money is invested into a fund. So if you're an opportunity zone investor and you cash out of a deal, whenever you have to recognize that gain, which if it's a direct investment, it's the day of the transaction. If it's part of a pass-through tax entity, it won't be till January 1st of next year. And then you have six months from that date to put your money into a fund. And once you put the money into the fund, that starts the 10-year clock ticking. Uh, so we've got some people are looking at doing investments every year going forward and looking at projects that are not limited 10 years, but they want to stretch the horizon to 2046. But at the end of 2046, everybody has to cash in their chips and uh, take whatever tax-free benefit they can get at that time. OK, so with that, um, we get into uh, extensions. And um, I see I've got X incentives, which means that spell checker worked perfectly, but it did not grammatically understand what I was trying to do. But um, uh, one of the things that, as I mentioned earlier, working on different ways to leverage opportunity zones to make them do more uh, by combining them. And what we are seeing is that uh, over the last year, decade or two, everybody's come kind of focused myopically on short-term investments, where it's th you know five years, then three years, then one year, then six months, then Let's day trade, you know? And uh, the net of that is, is that we kind of lost sight of the benefits of long-term investing. And we've also kind of not learned or never knew um, how money works differently over a long period of time as opposed to a short period of time. So because of compounding of interest and other things that are going on, uh, a long-term investment is actually somewhat different than a short-term investment. And we saw that opportunity zones at 10 years were in a position to start doing things that you would not ordinarily think of in a short-term investment, uh, including doing some of the combinations we're going to be talking about tonight. And, and we're looking at other places where this is true, uh, where it takes a little while to get the engine started and develop a little momentum in a business or a property. And, and therefore, uh, the results aren't going to be shown until down the road. In those cases, opportunity zones may work far better than ordinary investment vehicles uh, or can uh, optimize an existing uh, investment vehicle. So at this point, uh, ordinarily, we have somebody who has an opportunity zone project or a fund who wants to take some time to do a five minute overview of their project and show us what they're doing. And we did not get that done for tonight, uh, which uh, I will lay to blame on myself and my current schedule. Uh, but uh, if any of you have a project that you would like to show off, uh, basically contact me in advance. Uh, we'll let you do five minute slide deck uh, to uh, show everybody where you're at. That's included in the video presentation, which is then recorded and included when it's posted up on YouTube. So tonight's program and every program going back to November of last year has been recorded by my good friend Steve Maltz, uh, excellent videographer and uh, the, the best videographer of semi-pro sports activities in the Denver area. Uh, and um, we post it up on YouTube where everybody can see it and look at it as much as you want. Uh, so uh, that gets us to this point. Did anybody have any questions before jumping off into the next part of tonight's program? 
Okay, great. We'll take a break at this time.